Welcome back. We want to talk about air leaks. Air leaks are essentially just another demand on your air compressor, except it's not being useful for anything. So if you have mismatched fittings, if you have uh, rubber hoses that are worn out and have cracks in them and just, just small little bits of air, it's going to put a, a higher demand on your compressor and that air is not going to you, it's going to the atmosphere. Your compressor is going to be running a lot more often, it's going to be cycling on and off, it's going to be causing unnecessary uh, wear and tear on your compressor because that air is not getting used for your tools. If you suspect that your compressor is cycling on and off more frequently than it should and you don't think that you're using tools, a good way to do is maybe after hours, uh, you know, leave your compressor on. If that thing's cycling on and off and no one's using any air tools, that's a good giveaway that there's an air leak, that air is going somewhere. If you suspect it's in an area, you can use a little soap bubble solution and see if you get any bubbles forming. You could also use your, your ears, just listen to see if you hear any hissing. So the, the, the leak audit process is, is a pretty simple process. You, you can get some regular yellow or manila tags and go around your facility. Leave the compressed air up and running when no one's in there and just use your ears. You could hear where it's sort of going. When you get to that leak, find it, identify it, put a number on the tag and then write it on the piece of paper. So when you, after you get done and if you have 15 tags or so, then you come back at the end of the day and, and put a plan together. Say, so, okay, this time we only have two, but I already written them down. I know where they are. I know what I need to take to fix them. You get all your supplies, you come back, and then you bang them all out and get them all done. When we start to look at demand on the system, air leaks, supply, a lot of different things, they sort of all come down to the bottom line is, is efficiency. And how efficient do we want the compressor? Or how much air do we need? A lot of it comes down to pressure. Most people try to overcompensate and they raise the pressure of the system up. And they raise that because their, their tools aren't running properly. They're not getting enough speed out of the tool and they're trying to overcompensate for something. It's not necessarily the compressor's fault, it's the fact that the distribution piping isn't large enough. Or there's a ton of leaks in the facility, so everything is leaking out, so the compressor has to overcompensate for that. So we have to take a step back and look at making sure that there's no leaks, making sure everything is sized right, all the piping is sized correct, all the hoses are good, everything is good. So that allows us to start to lower the plant pressure down. And remember, every time you lower that, that plant pressure, one to two pounds, you're dropping a percentage off your power. So when you're running compressors that are 50 horsepower, they take a lot of power to run. If you can lower that plant pressure and get it down to a usable 100, 110, it saves you a lot of money. And that's just money you're giving away from simple repairs that you can do. These are just a few things to keep in mind when shopping for an air compressor. Uh, if you have any questions or something that we didn't cover, feel free to drop down in the comments section and let us know what you're thinking and what you have. We'll get back to you. If you learned anything from this video, please like it and subscribe to our channel for more.